Joining us on the line right now, seven-time Eclipse Award winning trainer, Todd Pletcher, and two-time Kentucky Derby winning trainer. I'm sure that has to sound pretty good, Todd. Thanks for taking time out of your schedule to join us on a very busy week for you. Let's talk about how Always Dreaming is doing. I know he's so rambunctious, a little over-aggressive early on in that week leading up to the Kentucky Derby. What's his demeanor been like, and how's he settling in at Pimlico? He's settled in really well. He's been great around the barn. His, his appetite's been fantastic, and uh, his energy level's been high. I mean, he's been, uh, he's been uh, on the bridle in his gallops. He's uh, taken a very strong grip. We've had him under control, but, you know, we're seeing very, uh, very similar gallops to what we were seeing at uh, Churchill. He's, uh, he's given us every indication that he's rebounded really well, and he's, he's strong and focused, and we're just trying to keep him on the ground for another two days. Todd, coming back in the two weeks rest, it's Andy Serling, by the way, uh, is always a bit of a question for everybody, and you do prefer to give more, yourself more time between races. Are you at all concerned that that could be an issue with always dreaming? Right now, Andy, he's not showing me that it's going to be a problem, but, you know, I think Richie could probably tell you sometimes these things are something you don't really know until you get to the quarter pole, you know, and you, and you kind of got to dig down and find that reserve and, and that extra gear, everything that I, I've seen indicates that it's going to be okay. But, uh, you know, you, 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 sometimes you just don't know until you get into the heat of the battle. Um, you know, I love what I've seen literally from the night of the Derby. I mean, as he, he rebounded quickly that night. He ate well that night. He's eaten well every day since then. And by the third day when we were ready to go back to the track, I mean, he was he was dragging the hot walker around there. He was showing good good energy and enthusiasm. So, all of those things, I think, are, are very, very favorable that he will run back and show his race, you know, in, in two weeks. Todd, this is Richie Migliori. Um, two things that I thought you a little bit of a departure from the norm for you. You you really let him work his last work leading up to the Derby. You, you know, allowed Johnny to kind of let him bounce along pretty good. And then shipping right into Pimlico, uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about, you know, why you changed things up for this particular horse. Well, he, he, he came into Churchill, and, he, I mean, he was just full of himself. In the first couple of days we galloped there, I I said to Mr. Viola on Thursday before we breezed him on Friday, he said, what do you think he's going to do? And I said, this horse is going to work really well. He's going to go 59 and change, and he's going to gallop out big. And that's exactly what he did. And, you know, I, I wasn't so concerned if he went 59 or 101. I was focused on it being – a proper work, and, and what I loved about the work was that he went in 59 and one or two, depending on who clocked him. But he went off in 36, and then he leveled off down the lane and came home in 23 and one, and then he galloped out in 112 and change and 125 and change. And Johnny had to reach up and grab him by the kitchen to pull him up. So I was like, this horse likes the track. He got over it well. He showed us, you know, all the signs that we were expecting. And and, uh, you know, he's, a, he's, a, he's been a very good workhorse, and I think some of his work tab might be a little bit, little bit deceiving because the track at Palm Beach Downs is not real fast. But he consistently was working really, really well against some good horses all winter. So uh, it didn't surprise me that he went that fast. And the way he did it was, was the most important thing. And then as far as just – Coming to Pimlico early, I think the one thing I learned by being at Churchill with him is he was very aggressive at Churchill. I didn't see an advantage to staying at Churchill if he was that aggressive every day. And I didn't see an advantage to shipping him back to Belmont for seven or eight days and then shipping to Pimlico. So I just felt like the, the best move was let's go straight to Pimlico, let him get settled in there. If we need to make some adjustments in his training like we did at Churchill, then hopefully we'd have time to correct it. Fortunately, we haven't. You know, he's settled in really well and done everything that we'd hoped he would. How valuable, Todd, was it having been through this experience before with the Kentucky Derby winner? And, and what did you learn from that? What did that teach you this this time around? Well, the one thing, if I had a do-over with Super Saver, I probably wouldn't have breezed him at all in between. But like I was telling someone, the, the 14 days just did not agree with Super Saver. And, and, you know, we felt like he was eating well and he was moving well. But he, too, when he was really, really on his game, he was he was a fairly aggressive horse to gallop. He'd take a big grip of the rider, and you needed a good, strong rider to to give him a proper gallop. And when, when we got to Pimlico, I remember watching him gallop here a couple of days, and he wasn't at that same level going into it. But he was healthy, and we were hoping – but deep down inside, I was like, man, I don't, I don't think this is enough time. 
Todd, how, how difficult was it to make that decision to put the draw reins, change riders? I mean, right on top of a race, it had to be difficult to pull the trigger on that. Uh, I, t I tell you, Richie, it was it was one of those things that it had to be done. It was a no-brainer. You know, we we knew we weren't getting accomplished what we needed to. And you hate to make any sort of changes leading into a big race, but it was one of those things. We, we weren't going to de deliver him properly on May 6th if he continued to gallop as aggressively as he was in those couple of days before and after his breeze. And so we, we, we had to make a change. And, uh, you know, I mean, even a couple of days with the draw reins and a new rider, there, there were some anxious moments where he was more aggressive than I wanted him to be. But it's, it seemed to get better each day, and, and you know, it, it obviously paid off. Well, it seems like all systems go with always dreaming. You say he's eating well. I hear, Todd, you're eating well also. Six nights in a row, I've heard you've had crab cakes. Is that a streak you're going to keep intact? No, I kicked it up to seven. You did seven yesterday. <laughs> I'm gonna at least have an appetizer tonight because I'm gonna. I got to keep the streak going all the way to the Preakness. I yeah. I was gonna <laughs> say you're gonna keep it going through. So I guess you have to at this point. Best of yeah. luck. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it, and uh, we look forward to a big race on Saturday. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it.